What the Fuji just happened to us, all of us? Our minds are blown, we're excited, we're nervous. Let's talk about the Fuji XT 1000. 100. Shit. Fuji, your image stabilization is less stable than a three legged coffee table. What do you do? Now, first of all, let's just get this out of the way XT 100. I like it. I like the name. It's like a Terminator. It sounds like it could kill us. I like that. That's what I want in my camera. I want to know that my camera can kill me anytime it wants. <laughs> Maybe take that as a lesson, Olympus. OMD EM17540. What kind of camera is that? Stupid. So Fuji just announced a new camera and I will admit this is the first time I've ever been excited about a Fuji camera. I'm almost considering switching from the Panasonic G85 that you have the privilege to watch right now. I'll tell you why I'm not gonna do it, but I'll tell you why some people might. This might be the ideal beginner's version of a filming yourself style camera. I hate the word vlog. It has such a bad feeling around it. When I think of a vlog, I picture some guy in his 40s living with his mom, and then his vlog is like going to the coffee shop and filming, look, I'm opening the door. Look. Yeah, we get it. You had to open the door to leave your house. Leave your stupid house. Nobody gives a shit. Oh, I'm opening my car door now. Look at this. Look, I stuck the key in it. Yeah, thanks for changing my life, asshole. So getting that rant out of the way, vlogging is great. I mean, you share your life, you may have a lesson to teach people in there, you're having fun interacting with your people of the environment. It's like, I like vlogs and filming yourself. I, I do that for a living, so it's kind of important to me. And Fuji ticks a lot of the boxes for a filming yourself style camera. And it's cheap, it's light, let's get into it. So first thing that sticks out, they have a fully articulating screen. They get it. We need it. We want it. Most of us want it. If you're filming yourself, you want to know. With the Sonys, you're guessing. You're putting it like, okay, I know the settings are right, but there could be like an owl looking at me in the background. And you'd never know that owl just sending his vibes at you. I hope your video sucks. Damn those owls. Now let's talk about this screen because in my opinion, the fully articulating screen is the best design, but I've heard photographers say, no, that sucks. I hate that. I prefer the tilty up screen that Sony has. This combines them both. You can tilty up, you can swivel out to the side, but there's going to be the odd person who likes shooting in portrait mode like a dickhead. Who does that? I hate portrait mode. Whenever I see a picture done in portrait mode on the side, I'm like, you artistic loser. <laughs> I don't like it. So, but for them, low hanging portrait shots, it won't flip up for that. So I could see the odd loser photographer not liking that, you loser. <laughs> so just looking through some of the specs here, the APS-C sensor is nice. I like that. I got a tiny Micro Four Thirds sensor. I'm the laughing stock of the town. I know that. So it's nice to have a step up. So that's one reason you might consider stepping up from the Micro Four Thirds sensor system. It's better looking, better in low light, higher quality detail. It's just, it's not full frame, but Fuji made a big mistake. They went medium format. They shot for the stars. Should have landed on the moon, bitch. Now here's the major downside of the camera. It's not all fun and whistles over here. So we've got no image stabilization in the body. That hurts. That hurts. When you get used to it with the Panasonic systems and Olympus has it, it's like, it's just the lens variety. You open up new worlds. It's like, holy shit, I can use a 35 millimeter fast prime with no stabilization and still get stable shots. So it's like, what are you gonna do now for vlogging? You just made the perfect camera, perfect vlogging camera, 
What lens are you gonna use? Let's take a look. Now the good thing is, it comes with a somewhat decent lens, the 15 to 45. I'm not loving that aperture, but it is stabilized. So you at least have a stabilized lens. You won't be too Parkinson's up in this. So what is that equivalent to? I believe Fuji's a 1.5 crop, unlike Canon's 1.6 loser crop. So we got 22.5 at the wide end. It's better than a 24, but it's no like 18. So that's what I'd like to see. And that's the thing. If you're going for a vlogging style, you want a wide end. So what do we got on the wide end on the Fuji end? Don't even look at that fisheye. I tried a fisheye the other day. Yeah, this is what fisheyes look like when you're vlogging. Don't do it. Just don't do it. I don't care what image software you have to correct it. Just don't do it. This 18 to 55 looks slightly interesting. A little better aperture, but a little less wide. 27? You kidding me, Fuji? Okay, here we got a 14 mil. 21 is probably doable. I could vlog with that. I might have to stretch out a little bit, but I don't believe this is a stabilized lens, ultra wide. Not seeing any stabilization here. Checking the specs out for a second. Stabilization, no. So that's right away unusable. No in-body, no lens stabilization. You need a gimbal, then you're adding to the weight. I've been looking into gimbals. Minimum 800 grams you just added to your rig. It's like this camera weighs less than that. You're going to double it with the gimbal. Could be done, but yeah. I'm all about minimalizing. Shut up. It's a word. Okay, here it is. This is probably your lens right here. The 10 to 24 F4. So this is a 15 to 36 full frame equivalent lens. F4, not the greatest, but I'm admitting on the wide angle, you don't need that blurry background. You want the background in focus. F4 is probably enough for daytime filming on an APS-C sensor. So yeah, I could dig it. It's got the stabilization, so we're good to go. But the weight, 410 grams. Let's talk about the weight of this camera for a second. I'm doing math. We'll be with you in a second. Okay, we've done our math. Holy shit, that took forever. Fuji, 448 grams for the body with battery and memory card. With the kit lens and your mediocre kit lens videos, you're gonna be at 583 grams. But with that nice wide angle lens that they had, we're looking at 858 grams for that camera. Compare that to the Canon M50, which is 387 for the body, 220 for the 11 to 22 millimeter lens. We're looking at 607 grams. So much heavier than the Canon system. But what about the G85, you ask? What about that one? G85, 505 grams for the body. You get yourself a Laowa 7.5 millimeter F2 lens. Probably the best vlogging lens, in my opinion, from my research. I don't have it yet, but I might get it. That lens is only 150 grams, so 655 grams for this rig. Now let's talk about this comparison here. First of all, let me get this out of the way. Anybody recommending a Canon M50 for vlogging is a paraplegic drunk. Just don't even listen to their ramblings. This is the dumbest camera. I tested it in the store. The image stabilization was so terrible. It warps your face. It does all kinds of weird shit. And it's like the lens selection sucks. What is the point of that camera? Other than autofocusing, big deal. But the Fuji, 858 grams for that kit. For a good lens. I mean, you can get third party lenses, I'm sure, but they're not gonna have image stabilization, then you're screwed, you need a gimbal. So. Comparing that to the G85, how do you beat that G85? You just can't do it because you can get that fast prime lens that's super light, the Lao with 150 grams, and it's stabilized. Decent stabilization as well. 
and then you can add in the electronic stabilization even smoother and you can play it only crops in like 1.08% so it's only a little bit more you can afford that on the wide end so it's like you didn't do it Fuji you almost had it but you can't beat the G85 what were you thinking we're lighter the G85 is lighter you look on paper it's like oh Fuji the body's only 448 compared to 505 but then you factor in the lenses and the stabilization and the 4k I mean come on now Fuji it's, it's cute it's cute you have 4k and 15 frames per second if you're filming like a silent film Charlie Chaplin. Is that even his name? I don't I wasn't that's not my era. It's not my shit. So could I really recommend it? With what we know right now, we haven't seen much footage from it. I mean I love those Fuji colors, they look nice. It looks a nice sharp image. They have better autofocus than the G85, but I've seen Fuji autofocus and it does hunt, it pulses, it's annoying, it's not quite like Canon or Sony. So that's not a reason to get Fuji. Would I recommend it? No, G85 all the way and obviously, come on, the Sony X3000, we all know that's the best camera ever. If you're vlogging, tiny little thing, it's all you need. Sure, the colors fall apart in low light, it's not great, but nobody gives a shit. You just wanna get your content and it's stabler than any other system. It's small, you put it in your pocket it's like you can't beat that unless you if you do want to step up your game step it up you want the nice better colors and sharper image then you get into the mirrorless and I would say G85 still over the Fuji I don't know how you beat it it's slightly more expensive maybe it's come down in price I paid 1100 Canadian for my G85 body and the Fuji's 899 with the kit lens so it's definitely cheaper than it was uh, unless you have Fuji lenses, I probably would just bypass on this one, but kudos to you, Fuji. You had, you intrigued me. You piqued my interest and still at, until I started doing the math and realized you'd be up at 858 grams. That kind of ruined it for me. And I don't know how stable that lens is. Usually in body is a little better, but I will say I've seen some stabilization that looks more natural than the in-body. The in-body does some weird shit sometimes. There's warping going on in the background. It's not perfect. It's good, but it's not perfect. The sun's coming out. We're clipping now. Can you tell that I'm clipping? Does that bother you? Look at us adjusting the aperture. Take that, science. Okay, we're done. Fuji? I like where your head is at. Get that 4K up to 30P. Put it in body stabilization somehow. Make the body bigger, but use plastic. Make it lighter. A strong alien type of plastic that doesn't break. I would love my entire camera to be plastic. Lens and everything. Just strong. I'd never drop my camera. Who drops their camera? Why would you do that? Dropping your camera on purpose, you losers. <laughs> I've never dropped it. It shouldn't be meant to drop. I'm careful with my stuff. So we're done. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Watch the other videos on the channel. Oh my god. We'll see you in the next video.